The Senate will try one more time this weekend to extend government programs that collect cell phone data. One big reason for the delay is Senator Rand Paul's ongoing protest. The presidential candidate and other Republicans blocked a final vote last week, and the senator spoke for more than 10 hours on the Senate floor yesterday, on Wednesday, rather, denouncing programs that he calls unconstitutional. Critics from both parties accused Paul of grandstanding privacy advocates, and some senators are on his side. In the middle of this controversy, Paul is releasing a new book. It is called Taking a Stand, Moving Beyond Partisan Politics to Unite America. Welcome back, Senator. Thanks for having me. Uh, let me start with what we just talked about in terms of the introduction. Uh, Senator McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham have both suggested that this is revenue raising, uh, that it is a performance, uh, more than a substantive effort likely to lead to a serious change that you intend. I think that's an unfair characterization. I think most people who know me and have watched my career would say that, if anything, I'm very sincere about this issue. Our founding fathers thought it was very important that warrants have an individual's name on it, that you couldn't have a warrant that said Verizon on it and collect all the records of all the people in America through one single warrant. So you know, I think I'm right in line with what the founders would have fought for, and I'm proud of the fight. And so I think there'll always be naysayers and people who want to you know, snatch at you for different reasons. So it's not about selling books? No, I think it's really about, uh, to me, the Bill of Rights, and I think it's about the Fourth Amendment. And I think sometimes my party gets all caught up in the Second Amendment, which is fine, but we don't protect the Fourth Amendment enough. But actually, I think neither party ends up protecting the Fourth Amendment enough, Look, which I, is the right to privacy. I think this is a really important debate to have because there are certainly privacy concerns. But critics of, of yours say that you have a pre-9-11 mindset. I just spoke with the Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, whose her office previously had prosecuted more terrorism cases, and they say, they need this ability, these uh, roving wiretaps, um, in order to prevent terrorism. Why not do that if it would prevent another attack? Well, the interesting thing is the Department of Justice Inspector General came out with a report just this last week and said that the bulk collection of data hasn't cracked one case. Uh, the President's Privacy uh, Commission also said the same thing. So in practicality, it's not working. But one of the reasons I oppose it is when we've done this indiscriminate collection of data, indiscriminate searches, one of the things has been bias. In the civil rights era, we tapped the phones and we looked at individuals uh, without warrants because of their race. We did it to the Japanese Americans based on race. We also uh, did it to Vietnam War protesters. So I think that it's very important not to let the government do general warrants. They need to be specific, they need to have suspicion, and they need to have an individual's name on it. But what they're saying is that's an extra step that you have to take. And well, then if you... Yeah, if you, yeah. It, the Constitution's in, you know, it's, it's inconvenient, but the thing is we obey the Constitution because it protects the rights of all individuals. And it also keeps bias out of there. You don't ever want systemic bias to enter into government. If you give government too much power, there is always the danger of having systemic bias. My guess is you think you can come out of it with some kind of compromise. Maybe. And what I'm looking for right now is to see if the other side will negotiate. All I asked for was two amendments at a simple majority vote. So I'm not being unreasonable. I'm just asking for two amendments at a simple majority vote. I would like to have a vote on ending the bulk collection. I think we can win that vote. I think the vast majority of the American people say you shouldn't be able to collect my phone records if I'm not suspicious, if, I, if you don't have probable cause, and if a judge hasn't signed a warrant, why would you get to look at my phone records? You can tell a person's religion 85% of the time from their phone records. You can tell who their doctors are. You can most of the time tell what, uh, sometimes what medical procedures they're having, and you can tell what medicines they're on. These are things the government shouldn't know about you or have the ability to know but, without a warrant. But the administration already supports that, that they would end government bulk collection. They're they Private companies. I know what they're saying. They're going to let the private companies. Well, here's the thing about the president. He's disingenuous about this. The president started this program through executive order. He could end it any time. The second court of appeals, the court that is right below the Supreme Court, said that it's illegal. Why doesn't he stop it? What's he waiting for? He says, oh, Congress can stop it. He started it on his own. He should stop it. And I've asked the president repeatedly, stop the program. You know, you're, you've come under attack, your book, Taking a Stand, Moving Beyond Partisan Politics to Unite America. In the book, you say, quite frankly, the GOP brand sucks. That's a, that's a quote from you. You said you want a new GOP. What does that mean and what does it look like to you? You know, I think it has to be, uh, I say, with tattoos, without tattoos, with overalls, with business suits, black, white, brown. We need to be a more diverse party. And I think you can but say that. But they always that. say that, Senator. I know, Everybody you're right. People that. say that, and yeah. I'm not sure saying it's enough. But I also think that a lot of predominantly minority audiences we have just ignored over the last 30 years, we just gave up. So I think going and attending helps. 
but I think also having something to say. And so I've talked a lot about criminal justice reform. I think the war on drugs has disproportionately affected the African-American and the Hispanic population and the poor population in general. I also have talked a lot about privacy and surveillance and how it has had bias in our history. I've also talked about a foreign policy, really, that ought to be, I think, a little more reasonable and less overreaching. And what would a reasonable foreign policy be with respect to ISIS today? I think we have to do something to stop them, but a more reasonable foreign policy wouldn't have been invaded Libya, wouldn't have invaded but Iraq. That's past. Well, the thing is, is the past can also be the future in the sense that your behavior in the past, that's why the question, when people ask Jeb Bush, would you have invaded Iraq knowing what you know now? And he fumbled the question. But the reason it's important is, what about Assad? Assad's still there. Should we invade and topple Assad? What will come after? About two years ago, I fought against the president and the hawks in my party saying that we shouldn't topple Assad because ISIS will grow stronger. Should we do more to stop ISIS? I think we should do everything that, we, that is necessary to stop ISIS. So yeah. what is that? Yeah. Well, what it takes is uh, coalition is building. Is it more weapons to, to the Iraqi well, it army? Can be, it, can be, more, it can be a variety of things. More advisors on the ground? It, can, it, be more a, special it forces? can be a variety of things. One, you need to look at who are the most uh, significant and most effective fighters. Those would be the Kurds. So I would arm the Kurds. Not only would I arm the Kurds, I would recognize the Kurds as a nation. I would take a lot of the equipment that is rotting in Afghanistan and I would give it directly to the Kurds, not through the Shiite government. I would tell the Shiite government that, you know what, if you don't include Sunnis, you're never winning this war. This war will never be won. You can never occupy those Sunni, ter Sunni territories. Shiites won't be able to do it, and Americans won't be able to do it. So you need to incorporate Sunnis into the army and into the government in Iraq. You also need a solution between the Kurds and the Turks. I'd like to see Turkish troops on the border of Turkey and helping with this and as well. And Shia militias? It's more difficult because the thing is, is the more the Iranians get involved with the Shiite militias, the more it turns off the Sunnis and pushes them back But if it's necessary to stop ISIS? Well, I think you need everybody that's willing to fight against ISIS, and it's difficult. We have tolerated so far the Shiite militias, and we have tolerated the Iranian influence. I'm not sure we could stop it if we wanted to. The thing is, is that people need to understand the Middle East is complicated and there are no easy answers. We need to do what we do to protect American interests. That means our consulate in Erbil needs to be defended better than Benghazi was defended, mm -hmm. and Baghdad needs to be defended. But the thing is, is that the ultimate victory is going to become when civilized Islam steps up and civilized Islam says that this aberration that is ISIS is intolerable. How are things with you and Mitch McConnell these days, I'm wondering? I don't think we need counseling yet, but I, I would say that... <laughs> Kentucky know, bourbon, perhaps? <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, we actually right. get, we have a very personable relationship. Uh, we are friends and we get along fine. On the NSA thing, we are on opposite yeah. sides. But uh, I, I think we both keep it very civil. I've not had any harsh words with him or him with me. Right. And uh, I'm still hoping that we can find an arrangement that ends bulk collection and if they were able to defeat me and reauthorize it, that may well occur, but it'll only happen if they let me have a vote on ending bulk collection. Well, to be continued for sure. Thank you, Senator Rand Paul.